When the species known as Zahreshi were discovered, they had just barely made it into space, similar to the other species that had been discovered less than 10 years prior, the humans. Both species were uplifted by the galactic community as commerce was one of the greatest things that the galactic community could reach for each other. With commerce brought in new things like foodstuffs, wares, and things of that nature, and immediately the personnel from each of those sectors began to stretch among the galaxy at large. Unlike the Greshi, the humans were always seen as almost a pariah, their hairless features and straightforward eyes, and their insistence on showing their teeth when they're happy tended to put most of the galactic community on edge. The Greshi, on the other hand, they were simply cute, standing only about 50 centimeters tall at most, and as the humans would say, they looked like walking teddy bears, whatever a teddy bear is. They showed us a picture of one once, and I'll be danged if it didn't look like one of them. For approximately 20 solar cycles by the human calendar, also known by them as years, the humans and Greshi may have met and spoken with each other, but they tended to cut each other a wide berth. The galactic community at large tended to draw more towards the Kreshi since they seemed to be more towards, well, what we're used to. The Ashnak were another furry species, yet they stood almost a full two meters tall and were much more feline. The Shahu were there almost of a canine-ish species, though they shared much more similarities with humans than most people cared to admit and they tended to get along with the humans quite well. However, the Greshi did not seem to be able to get along with the humans. Something about their presence just suddenly made all the humans seem to tense instantly when one was around. We could not figure this out, as the Greshi were nothing but friendly to everyone, and also very helpful, as their smaller stature helped them to climb in and out of tunnels that most people had difficulty with. They turned out to be pretty good engineers and definitely could follow what we told them to do so that they could upload their technology. Later on, the Greshi turned out that they weren't as cute as everybody thought. Unknown to everyone else, they had been building starfighters, as what we would call them. However, to the Greshi, these were actual battleships, and the weapons they used matched anything that we had in our own battleships. They struck every sector at once. The Kreshi, being of smaller stature and with smaller ships, could easily go and outmaneuver anything we threw at them. And with the weapons that they took from us and mounted on their ships, they could outfight and outmaneuver anything we threw at them. The Kreshi turned out to be extremely deceptive when it came to warfare. It seemed to be what they were good at. At any point in time, we thought maybe we had the upper hand, only to have another of the Qureshi's little devices explode inside our ships. As it turned out, as they were patrolling our ships, helping us maintain them, they were planting bombs. These sneaky little furry bastards ended up taking down entire dreadnoughts. Not destroying them, mind you, as the explosives were not strong enough. However, the amount of explosions on certain power conduits were enough to render the dreadnought useless until the power conduits were completely replaced. And if not replaced, they ran a chance of the dreadnought itself self-destructing, just from the power rerouting itself back into the reactor. On the ground, you would think the Kareshki would be easier to fight with but no they came at you in swarms and would jump on you what we thought were soft little arms were solid muscle claws that they had hidden extended out grab a holding of anyone who tried to fight against them and lacerating them so deep that it wouldn't be long that they would bleed out without medical treatment also the jaws god help us the jaws when they opened their maw it was rows of razor sharp teeth these Cute little beings turn out to be some of the meanest predators in the entire galaxy and laid waste to several systems, causing many species to end up being enslaved. And under the yoke of the Kreshi, the wonderful commerce that everyone had come to enjoy ground to a complete halt. Any luxury items were brought to the Kreshi, and everyone else had to live off the scraps of what they gave them. 
anyone who tried to bring up arms against a Qureshi would end up finding themselves swarmed by others and struck with weapons so powerful you didn't know how something so small could hold on to it. The only two remaining species, the Taktu and the humans, were the ones that held up against the Qureshi assault. The Shaktu because they had human assistance, and the humans because they didn't trust Gareshi enough to let them anywhere close. Though the humans had fully been ostracized from the galactic at large because mainly of their appearance to everyone else, the Shaktu had become their loyal companions the entire time and never forsake them. In fact, they spoke up several times in order to make sure that the humans would not be pushed out of the galactic community at large. However, this had mostly failed as people started choosing sides between human and Kreski. The Shaktu ended up screaming out to the humans, please help us. And the humans came. In response, they said, we do not abandon our friends. Though everyone else has forsaken us, you have not and you have proven yourself to be not only a loyal ally, but someone that we actually do call a friend. And when a friend in need calls for you, you respond. And the response that the Kreski ended up facing was something they were not expecting. Though the Kreski fighters were very powerful, they were rather small and could only mount a single spine-mounted cannon on each one four different point defense cannons for defense and for its the rest of its defense it was very simple they were so small that most weapons couldn't lock onto them when they saw the first human dreadnought as they would learn what it's called they didn't fear it they believed that the large cannons that they saw on all four sides and then front and back were simply for show and were for much larger targets and would not be able to target their single ships so the Kreski tried to get in close trying to punch through the armored hull as they very quickly found out that at great distances it was very difficult to get the exact hit on target but as they got close they realized that the humans had an ace up their sleeves it was called point defense systems these point defense systems were almost exclusively designed for shooting down incoming ordnance missiles torpedoes rail guns knocking them out but they worked wonderfully against the Kreski as they tried to swarm in many of their own fighters couldn't realize how fast their numbers were being dwindled until it was too late and they were inside the kill zone the unbelievable amount of projectiles being fired out was so fast and so broad that every single Kreski ship that was in range was torn to pieces and the pilot perforated at least 30 times the only ones to escape were the ones outside the kill zone and got out just in time as they jumped away from the sector within a single solar rotation of the human planet one year the humans had pushed the Kareski all the way back to their home planet and the Kareski forces stood there for one last stand as the humans held their fleet just outside of the kill zone. This would be twice the distance of the Kreski lunar orbit. And they waited. They waited to see if the Kreski were going to get in intimidated or if like any wild animal backed into a corner would charge. And if they did, they would head straight into the human's guns. But the Kreski were not that stupid. Desperate, perhaps, but not stupid. The Kreski had actually sent a second fleet out to hit the human's best friends. They struck out at the Anak fleet in a vain attempt to pull the humans away from their home planet and give them a chance to run, regroup, and then assault again. But you can't back away on a planet. What they did not realize is the forces that were attacking the Kreski was only the assaulting forces and not the defense fleet. Approximately 60% of the human defense fleet from the Sol sector showed up around their friend's home planet and began to lay waste to the Kreski as they continued to try and fight their way through. And this is what the Kreski were waiting for. 
they sent another force to Sol 3 in an attempt to end the human threat. If they could get their fleet outside of the Sol sector, particularly right over Earth, they could try and force the humans to back away from their home planet as it would be, as the humans call, a Mexican standoff, also known as mutually assured destruction. But the humans had not drained their entire fleet, and the Koreshki realized they had simply walked into a trap. Though the humans had sent almost every single one of their military vessels out to protect their friends and to attack the Koreshki home planet, the Koreshki were not expecting the human defense fleet, at least what was left of it, along with an entire defense grid around every single one of their planets and colonies. The Koreshki tried to run for it, but there was a certain type of field that the humans set up and did not allow them to run away. They could not jump in the FTL and get away. Instead, they had to run on sublight engines and were simply hunted down. And over the radios, you could hear the humans laughing. The video of their assault was shown to their home planet and told if they did not release all their slaves now, as well as agreeing to the terms of the surrender being a hundred and fifty years that they will not leave their own sector, then the humans will fire on them and kill them all. Not being complete morons, the Goreshki agreed. And for the first time ever, the galactic community realized that it doesn't matter how cute and friendly a species is, it can be hiding the most menacing creatures behind it. And fortunately for the rest of the community, the humans, though definitely not cute, were the mo now the most welcome species in the entirety of known universe. <laughs>